The proposal to revitalize Bayside is the largest single development project undertaken to date by Waterfront Toronto. And it's my pleasure today to announce that Waterfront Toronto has selected Heinz, one of the premier real estate development companies in the world, to help us create our city's next great downtown waterfront neighborhood. And our full intent is to create Toronto's newest great neighborhood. Not a building, not a set of buildings, but a neighborhood. 1,700 homes, office and employment space for 2,400 jobs, plus retail, restaurant, cultural, and entertainment destinations. We see this as a place to live, to work, to visit, to shop, every day of the year, all day long. So that was one of the first guidelines, is how do we make it walkable and livable in the winter. And what I've learned from wind consultants and others in studying older cities of the world, waterfront cities in Scandinavia particularly, and they always did street and block patterns that interrupted winds and made them softer and slower. And that's what made it a place you could use all year long. So that's what we've done in this plan. The fundamental aspects of the way the buildings have been shaped uh, really deal with sunlight and views. So the buildings have been conformed to gather as much sunlight as they possibly can. This of course helps with views because the southern views are some of the most beautiful views from the site. We see this as a fully integrated place socially, in functions, in every respect. A place with very small scale elements, a very gentle place on the waterfront. But the key is Bonnie Castle. We need to make this main street work like all the great main streets of neighborhoods. And it's kind of a simple retail plan, double loaded, continuity, no big surprises. And in the middle of it, Bayside Hall. And arriving at the lake is another big experience. So all along Bonnie Castle Main Street, it's constantly a new and different feeling. Bayside Hall will be built in phase one. Uh, it connects Bonnie Castle on its one side to Sherburne Common on the other side. And Bayside Hall, throughout all seasons of the year, will essentially be the glowing heart, the, the, the beating, glowing heart of the new neighborhood. We want this a neighborhood of intimacy. And the way of doing that is not to avoid cars, welcome them. Cars are going to behave themselves in this neighborhood. Constant turning, no long distance to build up speed. We don't need speed bumps here. We have a plan of a neighborhood that allows calming to occur on a natural basis. We'll have uh, an LRT that we're doing down Queens Key Boulevard uh, that providing access to the site. Uh, so we're trying to look at balancing, you know, transit, vehicular access, pedestrian access, bicycle access, and so forth. You know, it's quite amazing to think that I could be living there, then I can take a streetcar or a bus, and in 10 minutes I'm at work in downtown. I mean, th this is phenomenal. You can enter the, the complex from any number of locations. Uh, you will have unobstructed views to the water from Queens Quay. Uh, the buildings themselves are all covered in green roofs, so it's a very sustainable, both visibly uh, and literally sustainable building. Sustainable design has been important to us for almost 50 years. There's always new ideas and we're open and we bring them from all parts of the world. Also very important to realize that, that Bayside is surrounded by nature. Uh, Sherburne Park on the west, the Parliament Slip on the east, the lake, the promenade on the south. All along the promenade are civic uses. A daycare center is here, a health club will be here, a civic use, possibly a library, is here. So the promenade is very, very public, very civic. So the water multiplies everything. It's just sitting in your, by your window and, and seeing empty water and, and an island on the back, that just refreshes you, reinvigorates you, many of your worries just wash away just by being there.